Welcome to lecture 10 on the topic of carbohydrate partitioning. This lecture is separated into three parts. This is the first part. <clears throat> this lecture is part of the subject plant physiology, which is a component of the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology, a degree offered jointly by Melbourne Polytechnic and La Trobe University. Please visit our website for further information on this course and other courses that we offer at www.melbournepolytechnic.edu.au My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. Many of you are aware at this stage that we are learning about plant physiology by taking a virtual tour through the plant. We started in lecture one with an introduction. Our journey started through translocation of water and minerals, lecture two and three, into the roots, where it then travels through the xylem, lecture four. Water can take several roots once it reaches the leaf. It can be translocated through to the outside world via the stomata and a concept known as evaporative transpiration or the water can be used in the light requiring reactions of photosynthesis. We learnt about the non-light requiring reactions of photosynthesis that occur in the stroma. This is where glucose is produced. Glucose can be cleaved into a molecule called sucrose which can then be moved or translocated around the plant via the phloem and we learnt about this in lecture 9. And this brings us to lecture 10 on carbohydrate partitioning. Please ensure that you have watched all the other lectures before continuing with this lecture. There is a lot of material to cover in this lecture so I will be separating it into three parts. In the first part we will be concentrating on carbohydrate partitioning. You will learn about source and sinks, structure and function and its relationship to source and sinks, some of the simple biochemical processes. You will learn about some of the important carbohydrates such as glucose and starch and you will also be introduced to the important transport molecule of sucrose. In part two and part three, we will combine our understanding of photosynthesis, light and non-light requiring reactions with carbohydrate partitioning to understand the physiology and the ecological considerations. Two components of part one that we are going to concentrate on is the acclimation and partitioning of photosynthates and the formation of chloroplast starch. So let's start with a, a discussion on acclimation and partitioning of photosynthates. These are the products from the carbon fixation of photosynthesis. Eukaryotic organisms have to mobilize sugars from the cytosynthesis, what we call source, to cells that use them for growth or energy, and we call these sinks. Arterials of animals transport glucose Conducting vessels of plants transport sucrose. Photosynthetic assimilation of carbon dioxide yields sucrose and starch as end products. Sucrose is synthesized in the cytosol, while starch is synthesized in the chloroplast. During the day, sucrose flows continuously through the plant while starch accumulates as dense granules in the chloroplast. Sugars are transported from the source, the leaf cells, to non-photosynthetic sinks, stems, roots, tubers and grains through the vascular tissues, the phloem, as we learnt in the previous lecture, lecture 9. This process is called translocation. Stems, roots, fruits and young leaves utilise sugar as a source of energy for growth and as a building block for storage, polysaccharides. Polysaccharides mean many sugars. The onset of darkness stops photosynthesis in C3 and C4 plants and starts the degradation of chloroplast starch, that is, conversion of sucrose. And once it is converted to sucrose, it can be exported. 
The figure on the screen in front of you is from the recommended reading on plant physiology, figure 8.14. What it shows is the different structural components and where the different sugars involved are synthesised. You will see during the day that starch is a product of the Calvin-Benson cycle, as we've discussed in some detail. Also products of this cycle are the triose phosphates and the hexose, hexose phosphates and these all go to, to produce the compound sucrose. Sucrose moves in, from the cytosol into the vascular tissues where it is then transported through the plant in the vascular tissues or phloem. Sucrose can, use, can be used for growth or it can be converted into starch and fructanes and used for long-term carbohydrate storage. In the cytosol of the chloroplast, starch is produced. It can be broken down into glucose or maltose. This can also be broken down into sucrose, which can again be moved into the vascular tissues. Starch is a very important component and is the, as it is the main storage carbohydrate in plants. It is surpassed only by cellulose in abundance. Starch is a complex polymer made up of two components, amylose and amylopectin. Starch is called a polysaccharide. That means it has many of the glucose units. The glucose molecules can be arranged in many different fashions depending on the bonds between each glucose and these bonds are known as the glycosylic bonds. This is what causes some of the differences between amylose and amylopectin. Amylose consists of approximately 500 to 20,000 glucose units whilst amylopectin has approximately 10 to the 6 glucose units. In the figures at the bottom of the slide, you can see a demonstration on the left hand side of starch. This is demonstrating three glucose molecules bound together. On the right hand side, you can see some modelling of some of the different shapes that starch can be constructed of. <clears throat> At night chloroplast starch can be broken down to maltose, the main form of carbon exported from the chloroplast. For normal mobilization of linear soluble oligosaccharides, oligosaccharides means many saccharides, starch must be first phosphorylated prior to hydrolysis. Maltose is exported from the chloroplast and into the cytoplasm and converted into glucose. The figure on the slide is from the textbook, figure 8.17, and this illustrates the concepts we've been describing above. Another and very important molecule of photosynthesis synthetic assimilates is sucrose. Sucrose biosynthesis is described the triose phosphates from the Calvin-Benson cycle, including glycosericylide 3 phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, are transported from the chloroplast to the cytosol. In the cytosol, triose phosphates are converted to fructose and glucose monosaccharides. The sucrose 6-phosphate synthase enzymes will catalyze the formation of sucrose from the molecules fructose and glucose. In addition to proving carbon for growth and polysaccharide biosynthesis, sucrose also acts as a signaling molecule. For agricultural perspectives, sucrose is probably the most common sugar to be transported around the plant. The image on the slide shows sucrose biosynthesis. I will not expect you to understand the details of this, other than that sucrose is compiled of glucose and fructose molecules. The production of sucrose, 
like so many of these reactions, involves the input of energy in the form of ATP. Inorganic phosphates are transferred. A very useful resource to support this lecture is the following video that you can find on YouTube. This will assist you in your learning on this subject. It is on the topic of photosynthesis and respiration and has been put together by Mr. Anderson. Please take notes of the important components of this video and insert into your lecture notes here. To complete the, this topic, I'd like you to read the recommended reading Tays and Zeiger 2010 Plant Physiology 5th edition on Chapter 8 Synthesis of Starch and Sucrose. Please make detailed notes and insert to the lecture here. And this concludes part one of the lecture on carbohydrate partitioning. After watching the recommended videos and conducting the associated reading as well as listening to this lecture, you should be able to understand the following. A definition and what is assimilate partitioning. What role does starch play in assimilate partitioning? You will understand the basics of starch biosynthesis and also the basics of sucrose biosynthesis.